Now we are going to use a new input, a new type of input. There is a drop down. In Oracle Jet, we have different types of drop downs. You can find them inside the forms and then select and combo box. We have four types of drop downs. The first one, it is a combo box. Let me open it. You can select multiple values. It is combo box many or J combo box many. We can select multiple and of course you can remove from a list and we can also write something that is not inside the list of options. So as options, we have these four options. I can say Apple and it will be there. In a combo box, we can add some input that is not in the list of options. The same can be done in the combo box one, where we are only allowed to choose one item, but we can use one that is not inside the list of options. On the other end, we have the select single and select money, where we can only select values from the list of options. Let's begin with the select money. We have multiple values. And if I try to write something, it will automatically filter inside the list of options. And as you can see, I'm not allowed to put some value that is not in the list of options. So I need to choose always an option. And the same behavior is inside the select single, where if I try to put Apple, it will give me nothing. In our form, we will add the select single. For now, we will use static data, not calling a service, just the JSON object that we uh, are going to build. And then in another tutorial, we will change to get the data from services and we can explore the different ways of doing that to work with the array data provider. There is a class we need to use so the OJ select single component can recognize the data. It requires a type of object to the data attribute. There is an array data provider, a class from Oracle Jet, and it is this module OGS OJ array data provider. For now, let me open the basic example, basic example here, and we have some data. Let me copy the HTML tag. It's very similar to the others. Let's put that after the input age. We can give it a dynamic and unique ID. Let's use country. Let's input a country, your country here. Input country ID. We can duplicate here and add. The label will be also a variable and not a string. And it will be label. And uh, now we, we need to add, oh, not label, but country. You saw that, I know, country. We need to add the country translation here. This label hedge is where we want to display the label. For default, it is inside, so we can remove that. Again, this class is not required for us. We are using a form layout to handle the width and the disposition inside the page for all inputs. The data, let's put the input country data provider, provider and the value. I like to have it as the second one. Let me change here as well. It will be input country value. We need to define it here in the observable this is the last name disabled so it should be here then we have the country and we need to define this input country data provider it will be defined inside the init variables and it is equals to something let's put an array for now and let me go to the cookbook js file i need to import the array data provider there is this one go up so after the async validator and let me copy 
the variable name. So now we can define it as a new array data provider and it will receive for now an empty array. We don't have nothing for now. And the key value will be the value property. Let us go to the hub. We don't have anything and why? Because we need to load the OJS OJ select single module so the browser can handle the new tag. And now we have the country without any option, but we have a select single right there. For now, let us only have some default array of objects. We can give it right there. Let me do one and then duplicate it. It will have the value that corresponds to an ID, maybe. It's up to you. And then the label that will be Portugal. And this is a simple representation. We can have multiple options here. By default, the OJ select single will load the value and the label automatically. If you are receiving some property names that are not value or label, you can use a map a method to change the name of the properties, or you need to use the item text attribute inside the OJ select single where you can specify the, the labels we want to show inside the list of options. For now, let's use the default one, the value and label properties, and the ID2 will be UK for simplicity. If you go to the page, we have Portugal and UK. We have now options to choose. We can start typing and it will highlight the search for us and then you can select and we have the label here and the, the value, this input country value will have the value property that will be one in the case we have chosen Portugal. Let me add a new one and it will be the state. So country it will be state. state ID, the label, of course, don't forget to have the translations, state is not spelled correctly, so state, then we have the value, and then we have the data provider, let's duplicate that, and for now, we will have an empty one, an empty array. You can also give it here an observable array that will change if you change its value. You can assign the, an observable to a variable, to a property for our view model, and then use that here. Um, from my experience, it will have some performance issues. I, I really don't know why, but sometimes it took minutes. So the all the data is changed. Of course, we are talking when we have lots and lots of data not 10 or 20 entries. As I found that performance problem, I typically use an array and every time I need to change the data inside the select single, I simply change the variable to a new array data provider. And how can we do that? By declaring it as an observable. Let me refactor this and put that inside the init observables and let me put a section here called data providers and of course we need to declare it as an observable and have all of that inside the same for that so now we can change the, the value dynamically the value from each of these data properties. We have our data attribute pointing hat. I can simply create a new instance of an array data provider and then replace this observable with the new instance. And it will be faster than having an observable array inside of the array data provider. Again, by now we will have this empty. 
it will be there yeah and we want that to be disabled until the user have chosen its country disable equals to and then his input state disabled and we can have here let me put this dot is disabled equals to computers so you you can remember how it works and then a function if bind the scope if the country value exists then we return false to enable it otherwise we return simply true to have it disabled let me check so it's disabled now i have uk and now you can open it 